Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking you through the topic of structural isomers, but before we get on to that we need to look at some key definitions to make sure you're clear on those first. Our first definition is for empirical formulae. Remember that this is the simplest ratio of atoms of each element present in a compound. Now molecular formulas are similar, but the difference here is that they are the actual number of atoms of each element present in a compound. And I'm going to use an alkene as an example, and the alkene I'm going to choose is butene C4HA, and I'm going to highlight the difference between an empirical formula and a molecular formula. So as I just said, butene is C4H8, which I'm going to write here. And that is the molecular formula because that is the actual number of atoms of each element, four carbons and eight hydrogens. However, if we look back at the empirical formula definition, it's the simplest ratio of atoms of each element. So as it's a ratio, that means if we look back at our C4H8, we're going to cancel down those numbers to make them as small as possible. Now four goes into both carbon and hydrogen, so I'm going to cancel that down. And therefore, the empirical formula of butene is CH2. I hope you see what I've done there. What I've done is I've literally cancelled that down into its simplest form, and by definition, I now have the simplest ratio of atoms of each element present in a compound. Now we can move on and look at the displayed structural formula. And in this instance, what you're doing is you're looking at the actual bonds between the atoms present in a compound. So you're actually going to draw a diagram this time. So if the question says draw the displayed formula of methane, for example, this is what you need to draw. CH4, but with all the bonds showing. It's useful to remember that carbon always forms four bonds and hydrogen always forms one. And there's your displayed formula. And then finally, the structural isomer. All this means is compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So, for example, C4H10. Now, there are lots of different ways in which you can draw that, and I'm going to show you those now. Right, so C4H10. There's its molecular formula. I'm going to put in brackets its empirical formula, so that would be C2H5, but ignore that for the time being. I was just using it to basically explain what I was saying on the previous slide further. So C4H10, I'm going to draw the first isomer, and that will look like this. And then I'm going to add my hydrogen bonds. I'm sorry, it's going to take ages. Okay, so that's finished. I'm going to double check my bonds. Each carbon has four bonds, each hydrogen has one, so I know I've drawn it accurately. What is the name of this? Well, it's four carbons in a line, so the name of it is butane. However, there is another way in which I can draw this, and that is therefore the structural isomer. So this time I'm going to draw three carbons, and then I'm going to add another group down here to make the fourth carbon, and I'm just going to finish the diagram by adding my hydrogens. Just checking that I'm still recording because it's so annoying when I forget to press record. I need to double check that this is indeed C4H10, so I'm counting up my carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, and then hydrogens 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great, so that's right. So now I need to work out how I'm going to name this. Now the best way of doing this is naming the longest carbon chain, which I can see is this line here, 1, 2, 3. Because it's three carbons, I need to name it after three carbons, which remember is prope. So the last part of my name is going to be propane. Now when you add a CH3 group somewhere in the molecule, what you're doing is you're adding what's called a methyl group. So the name of this compound is going to be methylpropane. However, you have to specify where the methyl group has been added, so it will actually be on the second carbon, so it's 2-methylpropane. However, in this particular example, it doesn't actually matter if you write the two because there's actually nowhere else that you can add the methyl group. I just want to quickly show you something, which is that some people get confused because they're like, well, why can't you add the methyl group on the first or last carbon? But this is why. What you've done is you've actually accidentally made butane again because all you're doing is you've got your fourth carbon or your first carbon, depends which way you look at it, it's going around the corner, but actually if you straighten the whole chain out, you'd be back to butane. So whatever happens when you add your methyl group, it has to kind of be surrounded by um, other car carbons on each side, like a book I s bookends, I suppose. So whatever you do, don't add your methyl group on the end because you'll get the answer wrong. I'm just going to show you some more examples if you're unclear. Next up we have butene. Now, 
Remember that that's a full carbon alkene and its molecular formula is this C4H8. Okay, because it's an alkene, it's an unsaturated compound, which means it needs to have a carbon-carbon double bond. I'm going to pop it here in my first example. And obviously I'm going to double check again that all my bonds are correct. Because people often make the mistake by adding a hydrogen here, but that's wrong. Because if you double check, you can see that there's one, two, three, four bonds around this carbon. Let's double check everything else. There's one here, one here, so that's good. Two, three, four. And then let's just make sure that it is actually C4H8. One, two, three, four, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm happy. But the crucial thing here is there are there's more than one position that this carbon-carbon double bond can be. It can be where I've drawn it, or it can also be here. So we have to name it differently depending on where we've drawn it. This is going to be called butuanine. The reason being is because the double bond is between the first and second carbon, so it's butuanine. However, if I move it, as you can see in this example, the Carbon carbon double bond has been moved to the second carbon, so that's why we're calling this but butuene. So it is important that you use a number to specify where it's going. Whatever you do, don't then think that if you put the carbon double bond here that it's butuene, because actually if you flip the whole thing over, that goes back to being the first carbon, because it doesn't matter which end of the molecule you start, either here or here. That's either one, that's one, but equally, neither of them are actually different from each other. Let's get slightly trickier again, and I'm going to draw this compound, and I'm going to talk through how you learn how to name it. So, I'm going to draw it as fast as possible so it's not boring, you stupid. Oh, that's supposed to be hydrogen, I'm sorry. Try and draw them much more neatly than I'm doing. I know I'm a total hypocrite, but it's important that you make the person marking its job as easy as possible. Okay, so let's look at this. Right, our longest carbon chain is three, so we know that it's going to be prop. There's no double bond, so the ending is actually going to be propane. Now we've got two methyl groups. Remember the methyl group is a CH3 group. And these methyl groups are here and here. Alternatively, you could look at it the other way, and they're here and here, but it doesn't matter. I hope you see that they're the same. So there's two of them. So we need to write methyl propane, but because there's two of them, just like in carbon dioxide, you need to write dimethyl propane, and you need to say which carbons those are on, and because there's two of them, you need to give a number for each, and because they're both on the second carbon, you're going to write 2,2-dimethyl propane. Um, make sure you are happy with that before moving on to our next example. This is a tricky example. I'm going to start, as always, by looking at the longest carbon chain, and it's four carbons. However, it's unsaturated, it has a double bond, so we know that it's going to have to be an alkene. And the double bond is on the first carbon, so the alkene's name is butuanine. Then we can see that we have a methyl group, which has been added here. And which carbon is it on? Well, it's on number 2. So I'm going to write 2-methyl butuanine. One in. Oh, my writing is so bad. I'm so sorry. I really hope you found this video helpful. This is a really difficult topic, but just keep watching this video. I'm sorry about any editing issues I've had. I'm so hopeless, um, but I will see you guys next time. See ya.